Hey guys, what's happening? So, take a look. Well, I think this was a score. I'm not sure yet, but got this on offer up, 150 bucks. It's actually one of those infamous mini mills, or not mini mills, but the uh, mini lays. Um, yeah, it was 150 bucks, but it was uh, missing the control box and this rear cover. Um, but it looks like it was brand new. I mean, it has all the accessories, like it wasn't opened up yet. It looks like the, the company I got it from was like one of those companies that either bought the returns from like a large shipping, like you know, like in, in like Walnut, California area. There's a um, yeah, so there's some rust on it. So new these are, they sell for about five to 600 bucks, the seven by 14. So this is just like the first part video. I'm at the restore, but let me show you. Um, I wanted something manual. I'm not sure. I don't think I'm gonna convert this to, to, the, to CNC. Um, I just wanted something that was, you know, in case I wanted to make a quick cut or something. I didn't have to like, you know, write a CNC program. Um, because it is actually quite a headache to have to go into like Fusion 360, write a program. I mean, you can do conversational, but it's still, you know, somebody just want to turn the power on and make a quick cut. Um, so yeah, I got this thing, I saw it, and I was like, all right. So I probably end up designing, well, I'll get it out of there first. Yeah, so my garage is getting filled up with 3D printers I've already fixed. I gotta pick them up, but, um, yeah, here's my CNC lathe, the Sagami. I made videos about it. You know, this thing's obviously a whole different level <laughs> lathe here, but, um, you know, just writing CNC programs can kind of be a headache sometimes. Um, so, it's cool, it works perfectly fine, like I said, but it's, you know, for 150 bucks, it'd be nice to have a second lathe to kind of play around with. Uh, manual lathe. And there's a quick look, so it came with all the accessories. Um, center. This doesn't look that bad, I can probably get it off there, so. In this video, I'm just going to probably clean it off, get the rust off, because I don't want it to rust anymore. Um, it looks pretty clean, so, yeah, so my, my idea was I was just, you know, I was going to change the motor anyways. Maybe like a servo. I've seen some pretty cool servo conversion kits, or maybe I'll make a conversion kit, but I was going to design maybe um, a, uh, a new cover for this, a 3D print, a new cover for this thing. Um, yeah, it has the plastic gears, which aren't as desirable as like the metal gears, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I just want something to maybe like play with, you know, and kind of mess with some threading, maybe. Just kind of like learn, you know, kind of, yeah, but also just somebody can just quickly turn on and, and make a quick cut. Um, I want to do a quick cut off or something like that, or shorten like a screw or something like that, or do something, anything, you know. Um, so, yeah, I gotta learn more about this. But yeah, man, 150 bucks. Yeah, I don't know if it has a DC motor. So yeah, either I'm gonna do servo or, or like a brushless, like three phase motor. So, um, you obviously hit this part of your mains coming in. So I'm guessing this is probably the mains. That's probably feeding the wire. Well, because originally there was a control box here. And I don't know why there's two wires. And there's probably like a photocoupler, like a, like a tachometer here. That's what the holes are for. Because uh, I've seen some online pictures of this thing where it actually shows a picture of a tachometer on the control board. Came in the extra gears. Kind of sucks is that normally the things would be here, like they tell you the gear ratios. No big deal though. So I'm guessing they probably had to steal this control board. Uh, okay, yeah, it looks like it's a brush motor. I can see down there. So, I mean, that's where the brush little screw cover down there would be the brushes. It's like these are kind of like a 500 watt motor. Alright, I want to get the rust off right away. I don't want to do any more damage. God, it looked a lot worse than the pictures actually, the rust. So, alright, let's start cleaning this thing up. Alright, so one of the first things I'm going to do is spray it down with some PB Blast right here. There. There we go. I think it looks scotch bright. I'm going to use two of them. You know, more coarse and finer uh, on my CNC stuff. Actually, I think I read that on a CNC form originally. I'm gonna do a couple. Let soak. You know, 
I'll come back with the finer stuff. You can see how quickly it comes off. Do some scraping. Let that soak some more. Do some more scraping. Alright, so even just with the, the coarse, I haven't gotten the fine yet. It's looking awesome. Alright, so I'm going to wipe this whole thing down. Now, I didn't get too aggressive just because I don't, I mean, it's the thing is abrasive. I don't want to take too much material off. Yeah, because I could keep on scraping and get rid of all that stuff, but, you know, then I'm going to be losing material. Okay, there's phase one. Take a look. Not bad. Put a little light film on it keep it on there. That's why I sprayed it down. Because, I mean, I live near the beach, so there's more rust right there. Um, so you got to keep all the stuff. Like, I live right in salt air. So, like, raw metal rust in, like, half a second. Yeah, so, I don't know if you've seen this video or if the signal plate yet, but this is my mini lathe. I offer it off of score, 150 bucks. I had to 3D print all this stuff right here. Closure electronics. It didn't have the electronics box. So I'm going to bring that over a little bit. Anyway, just going to slowly, so, <laughs> kind of do this thing, machine. I'm just going to try to face this thing off here. That's actually why I got this manual lathe, man, just because I didn't want to, somebody just want to set up, uh, you know, doing a CNC program, you know? Alright, cool. Should be nice. I just want to flatten the face up. Let's see. Alright, I'm going to step into the, uh, I hope you can hear me in this thing. I think it's the first time I even used this drill truck on this thing. So I don't know what's going to happen. New bit. That's why I'm not using the final depth. I'm gonna make sure you get, uh, step it up in a different. Uh, trying to get this one through. Yeah, I won't go so much detail on this machining part of it. All I'm doing is just drilling holes.